If it had not been for the Lord on my side, tell me where would I be? Where would I be if it had not been for the Lord on my side? Tell me where would I be? Where would I be? That's an old song that was sung back in the day when I got saved as a teenager. A song that I had completely forgotten about until the other morning, sitting on the porch in my rocking chair, reading through the Psalms in my quiet time. And the first two verses of Psalm 124 sparked that memory and I've been singing that melody over and over in my heart. Now, you can find better versions almost anywhere, but I found it would be appropriate to share it in this study. The title of our study is, It Could Have Been Worse. It could have been worse, or it could be worse. Now, my wife is an eternal optimist. I love that about her because I am not. I'm a work in progress. She would tell you I'm better than I used to be. Now, I'm not sure if that's her optimism or if that's a, a, a good observation on her part. She's a glass overflowing type of person. I've spent most of my life being a glass half empty or sometimes empty and sometimes I don't even have a glass. But oftentimes throughout our history, she would have to sit me down and say, Gordon, it could be worse. And it is so true. The psalmist in Psalm 124, he describes the worst possibility, and that would be life lived without God. And then the best of possibilities, and that is life lived with God. He's really talking about the divine difference, the divine difference the Lord makes in our lives. Now, this psalm, Psalm 124, is part of the songs of ascent. Those psalms that were sung as the people of Israel would make their way every year to Jerusalem to one of the feasts to celebrate. Now, you and I, if we're born again, if we're Christians, if we are saved, if we're disciples of Christ, we too are on a journey headed towards a celebration in New Jerusalem. So this is an appropriate song for us to learn, for us to sing, for us to remember. Let's just jump in you know what? No. Let me read the psalm first, and then we'll jump in. David says this in Psalm 124, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken and we are escaped our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. 
I'm reminded of 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 12, where Samuel takes a stone and he sets it up and he calls it Ebenezer. He says, for the Lord hath brought us hither to. Now, I'm not where I want to be, but praise the Lord, I'm not where I used to be. God has brought me this far. He's brought you this far. We're in the midst of a worldwide pandemic, and I sit here today sharing the truth of God's Word with you. I'm not in a hospital right now. That is by God's grace in my life. In the first two verses, we see the psalmist David recognizing the Lord's presence. It's so important for you and for me, for us, to recognize God's presence. I'm reminded of a little booklet, a little book that I've read a couple of times titled Practice the Presence of God, Practicing the Presence of God. We should do so. But notice, there's a repeat. There's a double declaration, if you will, in verses 1 and 2. If it had not been the Lord who was on our side, now may Israel say, if it had not been the Lord who was on our side when men rose up against us. David says, if it wasn't for the Lord, if it wasn't for the Lord, those deadly dangers that surround us would have surely taken us out. It was because of the Lord. James says, every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father of lights, wherein there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. Every good thing in my life is from the Lord. And the psalmist said, if it had not been, I could sit here and go on and on and on about story after story, testimony after testimony, where God healed me when the doctor couldn't where God provided for my needs when I did not have the means to do so myself, where God restored relationships, where God protected me, where God helped me to see and know something before it happened, where God took all of my mistakes, all of my bad decisions, the decisions that other people made against me like Joseph, you meant it for evil, but God meant it for good if it had not been for the Lord. The Lord is mentioned four times in this short little psalm, verse 1, verse 2, verse 6, verse 8. That's God's covenant name, whereby God makes a covenant with you and with me solely by His grace. He's a promise keeper. The psalmist says, if it hadn't been for the Lord, if it had not been for the Lord, notice he says, on my side. Recognizing the presence of God. I'm reminded of Joshua who asked, whose side are you on? Ours or the enemies? And the Lord says, I'm not on either side. I'm the captain of the Lord's host. The question really is, is, is not whether or not the Lord's, that I'm on the Lord's side. The truth is, the miracle is, the cause for rejoicing is that the Lord is on my side. Not my side in the sense that I'm right. On my side, He is near, a very present help in trouble. If it hadn't been for the Lord who was on our side, he says it twice. And as I read that, like I said, that song just, just welled up in my soul and I've been singing it. It's been encouraging me. It's been blessing me. But the psalmist in verses 1 and 2 recognizes the Lord's presence. And then in verse 3, he begins recognizing the Lord's protection, His protection. I hope today you're trusting in God's ability to protect you. He has protected us in so many ways. I'm convinced today that God has perfect, protected you. He's protected me in ways that we don't even know. Things that happen in our lives, maybe a car that broke down, a battery wouldn't start. We get caught by the train, caught by every red light. 
we don't know today if that was not God's will, His divine protection, slowing us down, beating us to the intersection. He recognizes God's protection. He says, if it hadn't been for the Lord on our side, verse 3, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. They had swallowed us up quick. Just gulp, and that's the end of me. That's the end of us. And sometimes trouble has a way of seeming like that. We're just swallowed up. And the psalmist said, the Lord, because he was on our side, we were not swallowed up. This didn't happen to us. He then says, the waters had overwhelmed us. I'm sure you, like me, have felt overwhelmed. But I never really have, have been overwhelmed, literally, because as the psalmist, the Lord was with me. He brought me through. He kept me. In Psalm 23, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your rod and your staff. They comfort me. He said, the waters had overwhelmed us. The streams had gone over our soul. Thinking of Israel's history, we've got the Red Sea, we've got the Jordan River. He says, the proud waters, verse 5, had gone over our soul. Two times, he said, the waters would have went over their soul. I want to read a passage of Scripture in Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 51, where this is used as a metaphor to describe the persecution and the trouble and the problems that Israel faced concerning Babylon in Jeremiah 51, verse 34. It says this, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, hath devoured me. He hath crushed me. He hath made me an empty vessel. He hath swallowed me up like a dragon. He hath filled his belly with my, my delicates. He hath cast me out. So this is, this is metaphoric language to describe the troubles, the problems, the trials that we face. And so he talks about being devoured, being swallowed up in verse 3. And then he talks about being drowned being sunken under the waters in verses 4 and 5. And I'm reminded, I'd like to read a passage of Scripture to you. It's very comforting to me. In Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2, the Lord says, When thou passest through the waters. Well, let me just read verse 1 to you. He says, But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. Fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Let me read that through through without stopping. But now thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not. For I have redeemed thee, I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. So, David recognizes the Lord's presence in verses 1 and 2. And then he recognizes the Lord's protection in verses 3 through 5. And then, lastly, in verses 6 through 8, he recognizes the Lord's preeminence. His preeminence. He says this, Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. So he's describing troubles, trials, those things that we face. And first he says, these troubles will not swallow us up. 
though it may feel like it. And then he says, these troubles, these trials will not overwhelm us, though it may feel like it. Then he says, we will not be swept away, like he says in verses 4 and 5. These troubles won't sweep us away, carry us away, sweep us off of our feet. He says it won't happen. And now he says, these troubles, these trials, these problems did not grind us to powder, though it may feel like it. He said, blessed be the Lord who hath not given us as a prey to their teeth. Then he says, verse 7, Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare. The snare of the fowler, those who would trap birds. He says, the snare is broken and we are escaped. I can't tell you how many times in my life God has allowed me to escape trouble. Some troubles that I caused myself. Some troubles that I had nothing to do with. Some troubles that the enemy of my soul brought against me. Like Job. But I have escaped out of them all. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. He recognizes the Lord's preeminence in his hindering anything that would come against us. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. What can separate us from the love of Christ? Nothing. If God be for us, who can be against us? So he, he recognizes the Lord's preeminence in his hindering what would hurt us and helping us get through that trial, that struggle, that trouble, that problem. He says, we were not torn, and we were not trapped. He says in verse 6, Bless, blessed be his name. So he's blessing the name of the Lord. And now in verse 8, he's broadcasting his fame. So he's blessing his name and broadcasting his fame. And that's what you should be doing. That's what I should be doing. For if it had not been the Lord on our side. He says in verse 8, Our help is in the name of the Lord. And then he says, Who made heaven and earth. Who made heaven and earth. We need to remember he's our creator. Peter reminds us of this. In 1 Peter chapter 4, I want to read one verse to you. He says this in verse 19. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. A faithful creator. So, the troubles will not swallow us up. The troubles and trials will not overwhelm us. The troubles and trials will not sweep us away. The troubles and trials will not grind us to powder. The troubles and trials will not trap us. We don't have to be afraid of the sudden attack of the enemy. We don't have to be afraid of the, 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 the deepening flood waters that rise. We don't have to be afraid of the menacing beast that comes. We don't have to be afraid of the hidden traps that are set for us, for the Lord is on our side. He is with us. He always has been. He is. He always will be. The Lord has been faithful with my past. Therefore, I will be faith-filled about my future, and I will be fulfilled in this moment as I bless the name of the Lord blessing his name and broadcasting his fame. I'd like to close with one final passage of scripture. It's found in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 9 and 10. I love what Paul says here. And it's encouraging. Paul says this in verse 9. But we had the sentence of death in ourselves, that we should not trust in ourselves, but in God, 
which raiseth the dead. Now notice this in verse 10. Who delivered us? Paul says, the Lord delivered us. And then he says, the Lord delivered us from such, from so great a death. And then he says, and doth deliver us. Paul says, the Lord delivered us. And he does deliver us. And then look what he says. In whom we trust that he will yet deliver us. I love this little psalm. I want to read it one more time before we close. I, I hope this psalm will encourage you, challenge you, to just take a stroll down memory lane and just think about all the Lord has done for you, bringing you to this very moment. And I pray that it would ignite a spark in you, and from this moment forward, you will be blessing His name and broadcasting His fame everywhere you go. David says, If it had not been the Lord who is on our side, now may Israel say, If it had not been the Lord who is on our side, when men rose up against us, then they had swallowed us up quick when their wrath was kindled against us. Then the waters had overwhelmed us. The stream had gone over our soul. Then the proud waters had gone over our soul. Blessed be the Lord who hath not given us a prey to their teeth. Our soul is escaped as a bird out of the snare of the fowlers. The snare is broken. We are escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. I don't know where you're at and what you're going through, but as my wife always tells me, it could be worse. Life with the Lord is the best possible life. It is the divine difference, and it is my prayer today that you are enjoying that divine difference. And once again, I'm encouraging you to be blessing His name and broadcasting his fame. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. God bless you. Until next time.